Welcome to Holy Wednesday. As we get to the midway point of this Holy Week, I want to just remind you again, services Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. And then we have sunrise service at 7 a.m. And then our regular service at 11 a.m. All those services, save for the sunrise service, will be in our Christian Life Center. We encourage you to come out for those. As we get to this Wednesday, it's not so much what we read and what we hear as what we don't see and don't hear. In fact, if we're looking at the scriptures, what goes on on Wednesday is largely a mystery. If you're looking in Mark's gospel, you see uh, that uh, there has a, a lot of this foretelling the necessity for watchfulness, um, uh, this uh, plot that is going on uh, to betray Jesus. Judas goes and talks to the Sanhedrin. Um, there is a costly jar of nard that is broken and poured over Jesus. But all that happens before Wednesday. On Wednesday, we really don't have anything. Thursday, of course, is the Passover meal, the last supper that Jesus has. But what's Wednesday? The next to the last supper? Um, there's just not a lot on Wednesday. We're pretty certain, of course, Jesus, uh, in following with uh, Jewish tradition of the time, would have at least have risen early in the morning, would have prayed probably at least three times a day, uh, in some cases up to five times a day. But there's just a pause that happens. Now, if you look in the Scripture passages in our modern Bibles, again, between verse 11 and 12, there's a space that's kind of been inserted there over time. That wasn't there to begin with as the gospel was composed, but we've kind of got it built in there now. So we see that there is a gap. And it might be easy to think that scholars have, you know, maybe there's a missing passage somewhere. But maybe there's just nothing there on Holy Wednesday because it is a time of rest. It is a time of pausing. It is a time of taking a breath and collecting one's thoughts. So as we have already dealt with some pretty weighty stuff, and we've already overwhelmed ourselves with what's about to happen. And before we kind of descend even further down into the valley of this Holy Week. Take time to take a deep breath. Take time to pause. Be thankful for what God has done and what God is doing and what God will do in your life, but also in the lives of those around you. God comes to save the rich. God comes to save the poor. God comes to save the Jew as well as the Gentile. And in the midst of everything that we are doing, it's time to just pause. Even though it's not written, it is a time of reflection. So I encourage you to just pause where you're at, maybe spend a little bit of, maybe a moment or two in prayer and think about what is to come.